From the pages of MikeHuckabee.com, a safe space for reason and rationality in these troubling times, not to mention my free newsletter, and it's delivered twice daily to the most reasonable and rational people. I'm happy to report some good news this week, some light at the end of the coronavirus tunnel, promising results from a new drug to treat it. And it's got a name so long, I'm not even going to try to tell you what it is, but it's something like... (laughs) remdesivir, something like that. Close enough for government work, as we like to say. Well, when President Trump was asked about it by reporters at the White House, he deferred to Dr. Anthony Fauci, who called the early test results quite good news. Now, Trump must have known if he said it was good news, the rabid anti-Trump media would be frothing at the mouth to convince us that it must be deadly poison. And on the left coast of the country, yes, Even in California, people can only take so much of big nanny government. Governor Gavin Newsom issued an order to close all the beaches in Orange County after an estimated 40,000 people decided to commit the high crime of getting some sun and fresh air over the weekend. Now, I realize it goes against every instinct of progressive California politicians to actually trust the people to have enough sense to act responsibly on their own. But if they don't lighten up, and start letting people get back to living their lives. Those progressive California residents may soon be sunning themselves on a Texas beach, like so many other former Californians already are. And as Americans itch to get back to work, President Trump met with business leaders on Tuesday to discuss exactly how to make that happen. Executives from Wynn Resorts, Hilton, Toyota North America, and Waffle House were in attendance. That's right. Waffle House, my favorite. A sure sign that we're going to survive any crisis is that bright yellow Waffle House and a sign that says, open. Because I know that Keith Bilbrey and I will be there for our hash browns, scattered, smothered, covered, chunked, and peppered. Well, we're going to get to your questions with Keith in just a moment, but if you haven't already done it, you ought to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below. That is, if you're enjoying our content and want more. So let's take a look at some of the questions and even the criticisms that you have shared with us this week in our My Two Cents at TBN TV mailbox. Keith Bilbrey, what you got for us this week? Oh, we've got some jewels this week, Governor. Well, uh, first of all, Wayne from Ispwich, I guess that's right, Ispwich, is that right? Uh, Massachusetts. <laughs> I watched your opening monologue twice last week. Your arrogant, pejorative sense of humor struck me. As a confession of faith and promise of eternity, you decided to add the expert endorsements of Roger Stone and Max Lucado. Nicely played, Governor. The cherry on top was using Matt Gates to fan the flames of American angst over a Chinese bat virus. Pathetic. Sincerely, Wayne. Oh, thank you, Wayne. You know what I appreciate most? It's not just your candor. Thank you for that. But you watch the monologue twice. Do you realize you're doing great things for our ratings? We say thank you. Next question, Keith. All right. Marianne from upstate New York has a request. Could you comment on how we can trust our prescription drugs and other resources from China, especially now that we're talking about taking back our manufacturing and supply chain? Mm, Great question, Marianne. The truth is we can't trust the supplies from China. Frankly, we never should have been trusting them. The Chinese have for a long time not just been stealing intellectual property and cheating on the trade deals. What they've also been doing is they've been using child labor, uh, virtually enslaving people to work in factories that are little more than sweatshops. They certainly don't care about the environment as American manufacturers have to do. So a lot of people have been able to buy cheap things from China without realizing what the real cost was. May not have been at the cash register, but the cost we're now starting to see with the Wuhan virus. Because this virus probably wouldn't be with us with such a force if it weren't for the fact that we've become globalist. When you hear President Trump talk about America first, I hope you remember something. What he's talking about is let's manufacture things here. Our drugs, our energy, our food. Let's be able to take care of America 
and do it with Americans. Not because we're xenophobic, not because we're racist, but because we have the good sense and there's something between our ears other than space that tells us that when you farm out all of your manufacturing to people who would like to destroy you, it's really not a very good idea. All right, Keith, what, you, what else you got today? Well, Texas Ashley brings up a good point. She writes, I watched your segment praising truckers, grocery stockers, etc. All well-deserved, but it would be nice just once to hear someone in the media say something about teachers who come up with plans, lessons, and curriculum in order to continue to educate students all across America without a lapse. Oh, may I say me a culpa? I don't mean me a culpa. I'm not a culpa, but I will give you a me a culpa, which means I apologize. You're right, 100% right. We have not talked enough about the teachers of our country, many of whom have continued to put their lesson plans together and send them online. The truth is I've been uh, helping my own grandchildren uh, with their online lessons. They've all been uh, schooled from from home uh, since, uh, gosh, seven, eight weeks ago. And it has been a Herculean effort on the part of so many teachers across the country. So I say a salute to you for bringing it up and a salute to all teachers and educators for continuing to do their job even under the most difficult of circumstances. Keith, back to you. All right. Now, now, now some things I, I just got to do a disclaimer on, okay? Just to make sure nobody <laughs> misunderstands. <laughs> okay. Joseph from Denver. <laughs> the views expressed are Joseph from Den Denver's own. They do not necessarily <laughs> reflect the views of the reader, okay? I listened to your show on Saturday, April 25th, 2020. You went on a rant about going green. Your comments were filled with half-truths, misstatements, or downright lies. You call yourself a Christian minister, but you lie like Satan. And again, this is from Joseph from Denver. There will be a place in Hades reserved for you. <laughs> well, Joseph, gee, thanks for your love. Uh, I appreciate that so much and your <laughs> kindness. First of all, you say I call myself a Christian minister. I was a pastor. It's been almost 30 years ago. Uh, the rest of what you say, I'm not sure when you say I filled with half-truths, misstatement, or downright lies, might want to send me a follow-up email and tell me what they were. Now, um, I would like to just suggest to you, even though you suggest that there will be a place in the nether regions for me, I've already made arrangements through my faith in Christ to make sure that there will not be such a place for me. I may be most undeserving to get to heaven. In fact, I am. I will not get there because I deserved it, and I won't get there because I was the most wonderful person on earth. I will get there because I put my faith in Christ, who is the most wonderful person ever to live on earth. He will get me there, and he will never leave me more for, uh, or forsake me. So despite where you think I will end up, if you go to heaven, you're going to have to put up with me for all eternity. <laughs> Can't wait to see you. Hope we have a good time. Keith, what else? Well, as I say on Family Feud, good answer. Well, Roberta from Yucca Valley, <laughs> California. Last night, my husband, 24-year-old grandson, and I watched The Last Full Measure. Wow, this movie is so powerful. This movie is really about what's wrong with America. Oh, what a great movie. When we had Diane Ladd on our show a couple of weeks back, uh, I had had an opportunity to see a screener. I immediately ordered the movie because I wanted to have it in my library. I showed it to my family. We all loved it. We cried our eyes out through it. If you haven't seen it, it is a movie that will remind you of some really great things people have done for this country and also of the corruption in government that we always have to get rid of. It is a powerful film with a great cast. I do recommend it. Well, for my Twitter page at GovMikeHuckabee, we have a shame on you and a shout out salute. First up, a shame on you to Mayor Bill de Blasio of New York City, as I call him Mayor de Blasio, imposed crackdowns and snitch hotlines on his fellow citizens who leave home. Yet, he travels to his gym, nobody else is allowed to go, and he takes walks with his wife in a park 11 miles from his home after being driven there by his security detail. Gives a whole new meaning to the term wise guys, doesn't it? But on a brighter note, a Huckabee shout out to New Jersey newspaper delivery man Greg Daly. He wanted to make a difference, so he placed a note introducing himself to the customers 
to whom he threw papers and offering free help to them if they needed assistance getting groceries. Over 100 senior citizens have taken him up on it. He's been shopping for them and delivering the groceries to their doorsteps right along with their newspaper. Daly said it's been such a blessing that he won't necessarily stop even after America reopens. There's something about being able to do something really nice for people, he says. Greg Daly, we salute you for exemplifying the American spirit and putting others first. Thank you for what you're doing and doing it for those who really need it. In closing, I'd like to remind everyone of what the great American Booker T. Washington said about helping people. He said, and I quote, those who are happiest are those who do the most for others. Until next week, this has been the facts of the matter. Now, if you're seeing this, I know you've enjoyed that video. I mean, how could you not after all? So you know what you should do? Leave a like, click on the subscribe button below and hit the notification bell next to it so you'll always know when I have another video up for you to enjoy.